Hello viewers and welcome to our show called Credit Talk. Our special guest today is Dr. Credit and she is from BadCreditMD.com and our topic today will be about getting a credit card with bad credit. Say hello to our audience Dr. Credit. Hello. Dr. Credit, what can you tell us about getting a credit card with bad credit? Many people are dealing with issues of bad credit thanks to a wide variety of problems that have happened throughout their lives. If you have bad credit but no longer have financial troubles, you might find it a little hard to regain the trust of creditors. Whether your bad credit was a result of a divorce, an overload of medical expenses, or loss of employment, you have to take your time to rebuild your credit slowly. One of the biggest problems people face is that in order to build their credit, someone has to extend them credit. However, not many creditors are willing to take a risk on someone with a low credit score. Because of this, you are going to have to do a little work on your end to make sure that you are getting the best chance of new credit in the future. How can I increase my chances of getting approved for a credit card with bad credit? The first thing you need to do is to address any unresolved issues from your past credit mistakes. No matter how small the unpaid debt is, you need to pay it. If you have unpaid debts that are rather large in size, they need to be addressed. If you do not have the money to pay off the debt at once, you can make repayment arrangements. By doing all of this, you are putting yourself that much closer to qualifying for unsecured credit cards. However, you may still find that you have a little time to wait. You might have to take more action until you can get back to the point where you are being accepted for one unsecured credit card after another. You may find that even after you take care of your old debts that it will take a little while for your credit score to adjust. This is not something that happens overnight so keep this in mind. You have to have patience with this. It takes a few days to ruin your credit but months to rebuild it. Is there any way I can give my credit score a push? A great way to give your credit score a shove in the right direction is to apply for a secured credit card. A secured credit card is a card that only gives you a spending limit that is equal to the amount you deposit onto the card. However, with the monthly payments, your information will be reported to the credit agencies. Make sure that you are paying everything on time and this should help to increase your credit score in no time at all. Once you have gone through all of this, there should be no problem with your application for the unsecured credit cards. Just make sure that you are only applying for the best cards on the market and that you are spending responsibly. The last thing you want to do is to land yourself right back in the same situation that you just dug yourself out of. As you can see, you have a few different things you need to do so the sooner you get started with the process the better. You never know when you are going to need credit for emergencies so it is best to have an unsecured credit card on hand at all times. What do I need to know when choosing a credit card? When you are shopping for a credit card, it's wise to compare fees, charges, interest rates, and benefits. Some credit cards that look like a great deal at first glance may lose their appeal once you read the terms and conditions of use and calculate how the fees could affect your available credit and your payment. What should I know about credit card fees? Many credit card issuers charge membership and dollar participation fees. Issuers use a variety of names for these fees, including annual, activation, acceptance, participation, and monthly maintenance. These fees may appear monthly, periodically, or as one-time charges. They can range from $6 to $150. What's important is they can have an immediate effect on the credit that's available to you. For example, a card with a $250 credit limit and $150 in fees leaves you with $100 in available credit. Some issuers charge a fee if you use the card to get a cash advance, make a late payment, or if you go beyond your credit limit. What can you tell me about the annual percentage rate? The APR is a measure of the cost of credit, expressed as a yearly interest rate. The APR must be disclosed before your account can be activated, and it must appear on your account statements. Your card issuer also must disclose the periodic rate, the rate the issuer applies to your outstanding balance to determine the finance charge for each billing period. What is a grace period? A grace period lets you avoid finance charges if you pay your balance in full by the date it is due. Knowing whether a card gives you a grace period is important if you plan to pay your account in full each month. Without a grace period, 
the card issuer may impose a finance charge from the date you use your card or from the date each transaction is posted to your account. If you don't have a grace period, or if you plan to pay for your purchases over time, find out how the issuer calculates your finance charge. Which method is used to compute your balance can make a big difference in how much of a finance charge you will pay, even if the APR in your buying patterns stay pretty much the same. Where can I find a list of unsecured credit cards that are offered to people with bad credit? A free consumer company called Bad Credit MD located at www.badcreditmd.com has a listing of rated reviews of financial institutions that offer bad credit credit cards. Dr. Credit, we would like to thank you for being on our show today along with thanking our sponsor BadCreditMD.com. I was glad to be here today. And folks, if you need any help with any credit problems, Bad Credit MD is a great resource to get answers. See you on our next show. Bye.